Hello everyone. I am Steven and this is Erica. Hi. And we're from Brooklyn Brew Shop and today we're going to walk you through how to bottle. And can, just so we know, because this is live, could someone just tell us in the chat that you can hear us and we're coming through okay. Okay. Awesome, so let's get started. Cool, so what we have uh, that we're gonna do today is bottle up a batch of everyday IPA. So it's sitting right here. We have a few props out. Bottling is probably when you have the most stuff out. So we have a pretty full array of equipment. Um, we have our bottles, we have some sanitizer, we have our capper. Which is my favorite. <laughs> Yeah. And then we have um, up here, we just have like a prop that we'll use for a test run because we're going to do some siphoning and I know we get a lot of questions about siphoning and we'll just do it a couple times so that you can pretty much just see how we do it and yeah, by the end of this you'll feel confident bottling your next batch of beer. And the first thing or most important thing is to make sure your beer is really ready before you get to bottling. So in the winter, the yeast um, gets cold too and can kind of slow down. So if you're looking at it after two weeks and you still see some tiny bubbles, wait, tuck it away. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter if you bottle a week late, two weeks late. You just want to really make sure that your beer is done fermenting. And you can tell this by a super still surface, no little bubbles, and the sediment will compact to the bottom. Uh, it's called trub, which is another gross word in, in the brewing industry, but uh, it will be all the way down here, pretty compact, under an inch. If it's still like kind of floating around a third of your jug, wait, give it another week, and make sure that your room temperature is like livable room temperature, that it's not tucked in a garage where it gets really, really cold because the yeast could go dormant, especially in the winter. And if you're looking for a little comparison, here is the beer that we're going to be pouring now. So you can see the top is pretty crystal clear. Yeah. There's, Whereas... There's some uh, sediment on the edge, of, on the inside of the jug, but that's just left over from when it was fermenting. It's not actively moving in any way. And then you see here is a batch of cider that we brewed a couple weeks ago, and it is still got some action going and you can tell you see the little tiny tiny bubbles um cider uses champagne yeast so those bubbles are just much much smaller so this if your beer looked like this do not bottle it just wait just wait a few days whereas if your beer looks like this you're good to go Okay, so first thing that we are going to do is make sure that we just start getting everything sanitized. So I'm just going to open up our caps, pretty much just, just dump them in. Whoops. Probably more caps than we need, <laughs> but, yeah. but they're in there, so they're good to go. And if you do accidentally sanitize more caps than you need, just dry them off, make sure they're they're dry before you throw them back in a bag for storage and they'll be ready for next time, but we'll need to be re-sanitized. Yeah, and then I'm also just gonna start sanitizing our bottles here. So I have a pot of sanitizer. This is one way you can do it, just basically dipping them in, giving them a shake and pouring them right out. This is no rinse sanitizer, so just, you don't really need to worry about it. Just give them a little shake. And then before we get started, we'll basically just turn them over again real quick just to get any of that dripping, like that liquid that's at the bottom there. But this is okay. Just gonna do 10 of these. So these came out of this uh, bottle set here. 
And you can reuse any non-twist off beer bottles. So most craft beer comes in bottles just like this. Save them, scrub them, get the stickers off. But if you want to start with fresh bottles, we do carry those as well. You just don't want to use the, the twist off ones because when you try and use the capper, they can kind of crack a little bit um, and not have a perfect seal. And then you might end up with um, an under carbonated beer if air can get out. Exactly. And yeah, certainly um, using beer bottles that you drink from is, is probably our favorite part of recycling. So it's a good practice to do. You don't. You definitely don't need to buy bottles. All you got to do is just enjoy some beer. But then you get the labels on there, and then you know they look kind of gross. So yeah, if you're going to recycle your... beer bottles, please remove the labels. It looks a whole lot more impressive than if you have like a scratched off label. Cool. And um, and just. A reminder, we have the live chat going. If you have any questions or just want to say hi, throw them our way. We'll be answering them as we go. We'll probably do a, like a you know, bigger Q&A at the end, but any questions you have, let us know. We have some like carbonation questions. We'll be getting to that um, like as we go, as we talk about priming sugar mm -hmm. and a little bit more. And, and the number one thing with, um, with carbonation it, to start with is to make sure that your beer is ready to be bottled. If you bottle it early and it is still bubbling, that can definitely lead to overcarbonation. So make sure that it is ready to be bottled on bottling day. And Natasha says you're behind. Oh, I'm hiding. Thank you. Thanks, Natasha. <laughs> yeah. We don't want Erica hiding. She's no. It's a crucial <laughs> part of this process. Um, and you'll see, you'll see in the bottling process why gravity is your friend. This is why we have things high up. And it also helps to be tall, uh, so then you don't go missing behind the apple crate. <laughs> and uh, we have a question about swing top bottles, if there's any special considerations to keep in mind. One, make sure that it held a carbonated beverage before. Swing top bottles got really trendy, and you can find them um, kind of at stores, and they might be thin glass. But if it was a beer bottle or a sparkling cider, uh, that's a swing top, that's going to be great. Thick glass held a carbonated beverage before. Uh, those swing top bottles are perfect. Something that is just like at a dollar store probably doesn't have um, a high enough quality of glass to withstand the carbonation. Yeah, so make sure it has a rubber gasket. So a lot of them, like the ones that Erica mentions, are uh, only have like plastic, hard plastic. That will not work. The CO2 is gonna escape. Um, so rubber gasket, make sure the rubber gasket is like still flexible and clean. Um, you can get replacement rubber gaskets on the internet if you need but if it's like really brittle and like old it might not work um, keep it in some sanitizer for a while see if it like regains some of that elasticity um, if not you might just want to use new um, gaskets or new bottles entirely yeah but lots of Belgian beers come in swing top bottles um, the the cheapest easiest ones are Grolsch uh, they work great yeah so now that our bottles are sanitized and our caps are awaiting sanitization, we'll start getting our equipment ready. So, what we have here is a racking cane that you see here. It's this um, plastic tube with a little bit of a bend at the bottom. At the bottom here of the racking cane is the racking cane tip. So, it's just this little black piece of plastic. <laughs> It goes over the bottom, and what this does is when you're siphoning your beer or your cider or your wine, pretty much anything you're siphoning, it's going to make sure that the liquid is coming from above and not from below. Because if your liquid is coming from below, that means you're going to be sucking up that sediment. You're sucking up that shrub, and that's exactly what you don't want to do. So you want to be able to get your siphon as low as you can but without disturbing that bottom layer of sediment. So the liquid is flowing downward and then up. So that's what that does. On the end of this rack and cane is our tubing. So it's flexible vinyl tubing and it's food grade. Um, so we're gonna wanna sanitize it still, but uh, it's long enough to get a good siphon going. And then at the end here, we have a tubing clamp. So it has 
a um, few clicks. You can hear this. Maybe you could hear that. Do it again. Cool. So um, what this does, it starts and stops the flow of your liquid, be it sanitizer, water, beer, anything. So let me just check this. Cool. So what we're going to do now is just sanitize this all. We already sanitized it beforehand, but we'll just do it one more time. Da, da, da. And bottling is one of the, um, you might get a little wet, so have some paper towels or some cloth towels around you as you go. Cool. And I'm just going to let that sit there for one second while we look at this a bit. So this is the one gallon jug right up to the one gallon mark that you see right there. Um, it's full of a little sanitizer, so we're going to do one dry run where we're just going to siphon that into a pot uh, and talk a little bit about siphoning as we go. And we really, really recommend that you two do a dry run. Practice with water, practice with some sanitizer. Uh, it's a little bit tricky, but it feels a whole lot easier going into it your second time when you're not worried about spilling your beer. Spilling water just gets your floors a little bit wet. And I uh, got a question about someone who was actually missing one of these, uh, the Rack and Cane tip. If you're ever missing a piece, just email us at info at brooklynbrewshop.com. Um, we'll put that in the description later and also include it in the email that will follow tomorrow. But info at brooklynbrewshop.com will help you either find it or we'll get you a new piece. So no need to worry about that. And if you're just brewing, remember this is two weeks after you're brewing. So best thing to do is when you get your kit, just take a really close look at it. Make sure you got everything that's there. And if you don't, let us know and we'll absolutely help you out. And the racking cane tip, we package in a bag with the other small parts like the screw cap stopper and airlock. Um, it doesn't come already attached to the cane. You do that on bottling day. Yeah, so it might just it might just be in that little pouch. It's not on there when you get it. Cool. So first step of siphoning is actually filling this tube up. So what we're going to basically do is you're going to have this closed and once you open up the tubing clamp the liquid in here is going to rush out and it has to be replaced by whatever can come into here. So since our tubing, uh, since our racking cane will be submerged this liquid here will be replaced by this liquid here. So that's uh, basically simple mechanics in a nutshell. So uh, if you've ever you know, basically owned a fish tank, this might be something you've done before. Um, if not, this might be the first time you're siphoning. So what we want to do is fill this tubing. So make sure your racking clamp, make sure your tubing clamp is open and you want to slowly submerge it in some sanitizer. You'll want this uh, rack and cane tip, uh, sorry, the rack and cane sticking up and out. And as you do this, you'll see some bubbles coming out of your tubing. Cool. Let me just check something. Cool. We're all set. So you basically just want to wiggle it or keep just wiggling it around until you get all the bubbles out. Remember bubbles and air are going to go to the highest part of the tubing. So if your tubing is like this, then your bubbles are just going to rest at the top of that arch. So I'm going to basically like raise a part of it. I'm going to see that there's still a bit of air in that tubing and I'm going to lower it back down and just getting all the bubbles out that I can. And then I'm going to close the tubing clamp while it is still under the sanitizer. And then I'm going to raise it up and you can see that the whole length of tubing is full of sanitizer. So I've 
flipped it shut, so that's not really going anywhere. And you can see that there is sanitizer up to this point. I'm not sure if you can see it, but that point has sanitizer, and then everything down below there has sanitizer. And the key to remember is that liquid always wants to be lower, so it's always going to try to follow gravity downward. Now that this is clamped shut, it's near perfect. So I can lower it and the, basically the liquid that was in the end of that is going to flow out, but for the most part you see it's not really moving, it might drip a little bit. So I'm now going to put the end of this racking cane into the jug and I'm going to open the clamp and you'll see what happens. And now it's flowing out. I can close it and I can open it and it keeps flowing out. What you want to do is make sure that the difference between this height and this height is as great as you can make it because gravity is always going to be stronger with the greater the difference. So I hope that makes sense. Let's see if we have any questions so far. And when I do this by myself, I actually siphon straight onto the floor. I'll have my bottles, my pot down there um, because I can't <laughs> reach that high and that's totally fine. Uh, definitely take advantage of your table height take advantage of anything you can stack it on, but make sure that you're getting as much distance between what you're siphoning from and what you're siphoning into. And we got a couple questions about people having difficulty just getting this tubing onto the racking cane. You can move over there if you're oh, not yeah. I'm just... Uh, <laughs> and someone um, recommended actually putting the tip of the tubing in some hot water for a few seconds, and that's, that's great. Um, basically, what I often do is just soak it in the sanitizer first. The sanitizer is like kind of helps lubricate things. Um, hot water will definitely help make it more pliable. And the key is just little by little. Don't you know? Don't stick it from afar on there. Just get it as close as you can and just wiggle it on a little bit at a time. And then once you are be able to put it in sanitizer or something warm, it will go on a bit more easily. Any more questions? And yes, that was Porter. Anyone who uh, attended our last class got to see the dog. We are in our kitchen, so thank you for joining us. Um, you're probably also hearing some sirens. Again, this is Brooklyn. Um, so if you're gonna hear some sirens, you might hear a dog. So I'll just let this keep flowing out. Here it goes. You see, it goes down pretty quickly. If you wanted to slow this down for any reason, you can click it a couple times, but once it's full, you know, you want to, you don't want to mess with it too much. You want to just kind of get this liquid out of here. Cool. And I'm going to stick the racking cane in the corner and I'm going to turn it, or sorry, tilt it a bit, just so we're getting as much liquid as we can. Yeah, so if anyone's curious, we are currently just siphoning sanitizer. Otherwise, this is a, um, maybe it's one of those cool, trendy, uh, hard seltzers that you might have saw a commercial yeah. for last week. <laughs> or Zima. And uh, another trick, if you're doing it by yourself, is to prop it up a little bit. It's definitely easier to have a friend just to hold it, especially when you're dealing with sediment. You don't want it to be dragging in there. So a second set of hands is is definitely handy, but um, Steven can do it solo, and I just stand here. <laughs> cool. So if this were beer, there would be a bit of sediment down there since it was all liquid. I mean, it probably ended up with less than a quarter cup. So I think... I call that a bottling success. I'm just going to shake this around so that when we brew, when this class is over, we have a jug ready to go. Oops. What am I doing? <laughs> I was getting the other jug, but that was the cider that we showed. So what I'm going to do now is just get our 
actual beer in the place very slowly, very gingerly. I'm doing it as slowly as I can because I don't want to um, I don't want to mess with that sediment. And it is it is okay. I was moving stuff around earlier and I saw that I kicked up a little bit and I you know realized, hold on, just take it take it easy. So when you are bottling, get your beer into place kind of earlier in the process, um, just so that if you do move it around, do kick up some sediment, it has a little bit of time to just settle back down. Cool. Any more questions? No, we're good? Cool. So that was our test, our yeah. test run. And we only did it once, but please do it a couple times. If you're getting frustrated, um, let us know. We can give you more tips. Rewatch this video. Uh, another one of the tips I give people if they can't get quite enough distance is that you can shorten the tubing, the flexible vinyl tubing just a bit. So if you want to cut two or three inches off of that, if that really makes a difference, um, do that. You won't miss it, but otherwise don't, I mean, don't cut it into six inches. It won't work at all. <laughs> cool. So yeah, pretty much now we're ready to get started. So I'm going to remove our airlock. I'm going to remove our screw cap stopper. Just doing it with this so I could do it nice and slowly because it felt a little, a little, felt a little tight. Cool. It's off. Check our time. One second. Okay. Okay. Cool. So that is ready. And what we're going to do now is. Move this into a pot with some of our priming sugar. And then we're gonna transfer it from the pot into bottles. So we have our pot that we just sanitized with the liquid from the jug. So I'm gonna move the racking cane over here. I'm just gonna empty this out. Cool, so it's right here, ready to go. And when I mention priming sugar, basically what I'm talking about is some additional sugar that we're going to add to whatever we're bottling that will carbonate our beer. It's going to wake up our yeast and give it a little bit extra sugar so that it can just ferment and make some CO2. And, you know, your beer was making CO2 this whole time it was in the jug, but it was escaping out through the airlock. Now it's going to be in enclosed bottles, so the CO2 has nowhere to go, and that's going to be your carbonation. So we just did this um, before we got started, but what we have here is three tablespoons of honey, which is regular store-bought honey. It usually works great. But actual honey, not like some honey syrup that has corn syrup in it, that'll be different. Yeah, yeah. So careful with that. And then also raw honey is going to be slightly less fermentable than just like, look for basically something that's in a, in a bear shape. Um, <laughs> so we've taken that, we've taken three tablespoons of honey, not heaping, just pretty level tablespoons of honey, and we've mixed it with a half cup of water. So just cold tap water. And then we brought it to the stove and we gave it a stir until it basically all dissolved. So kind of like we were making a simple syrup for cocktails, basically. So we have that and I'm just going to pour it in to our pot. And, and before you mix up your bottling sugar, the important thing to remember in this step is to make sure that you have the full gallon of beer. If you boiled off a little bit too much, you poured it in and it was like an inch shy and you didn't top it off with water, you're going to want to scale back on that bottling sugar because if you're adding the full amount of sugar to less than a gallon of beer, you're adding too much sugar per bottle and that's going to lead to overcarbonation. Yes. And if you have any questions, please, you can even just Send us a picture of your fermenter. We'll eyeball it for you and give you a good idea of where you should start. 
Yeah, so send us a message on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We, I helped someone bottle last night while watching a movie. <laughs> we, like, we like answering any questions you have. Um, so always send them over to us, at, usually at Brooklyn Brew Shop, and we'll help you out. Um, we'll, we'll diagnose any beer issue you're running into gladly. You can also post, post them on here on Facebook, or sorry, on YouTube, and we'll help you out there. So what I'm going to do now is siphon this beer into this pot. So, again. And I'm in charge. Yeah, so Erica's gonna get some close ups as we go. Um, so, as long as you're holding it like that, just press the space bar and that'll wow. take over. Cool. Cool. So, again, I'm going to fill this tubing with sanitizer. Gonna make sure that the tubing clamp is open. And I'm seeing bubbles coming out of the tubing now. That Do you want close up now? Sure, why not? All right. Let's Get try and get some bubbles. So I'll. There we go. Cool. It's kind of just like when you're filling anything with water. Uh, you need a little bit of space. If you just put it all underwater, it's not going to fill. You got to kind of go up and down and up and down until it's full. That, sorry, my fingers are covering the lens. I've never been in charge of close up before. Okay. Oh. If I press space, do I go back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And we're back. <laughs> Sorry, that was not the most uh, beautiful filming. If it was okay, give give Eric some hearts or something. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't see the chat right now, but I'll, I'll appreciate them when I get back to it. Cool. So, and just remember, take your time here. Your beer took a couple weeks to ferment, so no need to rush this step. So you can see that our sanitizer is up to there. I still just want more in here because every inch is going to help make a really nice flow. So I'm going to just stick it back under. I'm going to open that tubing back up and just let, kind of let the sanitizer displace what is in there. Just give it little bits of, of shaken. And I see the sanitizer is now like in the racking cane tube. So I see it's all, or the racking cane. So I see it is there. So I'm going to close it. And. Cool. So you see where my pinky is here is now where the line of the sanitizer is. I'm gonna grab one more bowl. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. I had a pot right here. <laughs> Ready to go. So you don't actually need this many pots, but you're not usually teaching a live class on YouTube uh, when, when you're when you're doing it. So cool. So I'm gonna just let that drip out. And now, Erica, do you want to get on this side? Cool. So I'm going to stick this. Rack and cane in, and now what I'm going to do is open the tubing clamp and let the beer start flowing in. And as soon as I start seeing beer in the tubing, instead of sanitizer, I'm going to close this and I'm going to move the tubing over to my pot of priming sugar. So basically right now, I'm just trying to get the sanitizer out of the tubing. So I'm going to open it up, and you'll see. Cool. And that was really quick, and that's the thing. It is a fast process, so do your tests. Um, you don't want to lose all your beer. But right now I have beer in my tubing, and I'm going to bring it over. 
and I'm going to open it back up. And you can see it go down. Yeah, you can see it go down. So here, if you want to tilt the jug a bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just mix the priming sugar with the beer slowly and gently. You don't want to like spray your beer everywhere at this point um, because you can introduce oxygen and then you might get like a kind of a stale tasting beer as if it were like already a little flat so keep the tubing underneath the surface of your beer and just gradually move it left and right so that you're mixing your priming sugar with your beer. See, it's just it's going down slowly but surely. I'm keeping it always like maybe I don't know three quarters of an inch away from the bottom of the sediment. We can tilt that a little bit more. Keep going. Yep. And I'm lowering it as I go. Pretty much always want to keep it below the surface, but never too close to the bottom. And it's really getting close now. And. You. Cool. <laughs> Our first live siphon. Thank you everyone <laughs> for watching. And as you can see, it's um, Stephen did a really, really good job. It's pretty much only sediment with like a, the thinnest layer of beer on top. Um, I normally freak out a little bit before that and, and call it a day. But uh, if you have, if you're really calm, and can and have a steady hand, you can get as low as that. Yeah, you don't you don't go on YouTube to see someone play it safe. <laughs> so, so, so here we have beer. It just went right into our like our sanitized pot, so it's still sanitized at this point. Um, here, I'm gonna move this away. I'm you. There's lots of things you can do with like reusing yeast, cleaning yeast. Um, it's not. It's not something we do a lot, so I'm just gonna we're just gonna get rid of this. Yeah, and um, just got a great question about whether honey or maple syrup impact any flavor in the finished beer, and the answer is yes. Uh, honey and maple syrup aren't 100% fermentable sugars, so they do leave some flavor and a little bit of sweetness behind, uh, and the carbonation actually kind of tastes like honey or maple syrup. We really really like that. If that's not something you like, definitely um, shoot us an email. We can give you alternate bottling sugar suggestions, and I'll include a kind of handy chart in the follow-up email with a link to this class for substitutions. Because if you're switching to something like table sugar, you use less of it than you do honey or maple syrup. Yeah, all sugar is fermentable to a different extent. And maple syrup oh, is... Oh, I'm sorry. Close-up is on. Um, <laughs> okay, that was terrible. So sorry about that. <laughs> Blame me. No, no, no. Um, yeah, so everyone get that. <laughs> um, but what I was just doing now is bringing our bottles back over here. Um, I have our pot up here that is full of beer with the priming sugar, and yeah, pretty much we're ready to start doing our bottling now. Let's see if, uh, go back to chat. I'm scared now. I might... <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay. Porter heard your name, or actually she heard a skateboard. <laughs> So, what we're going to do now is once again fill this tubing with sanitizer, and that's going to start our siphon. So, I'm going to put the one end here, and then I'm going to just lower this down gradually so that the sanitizer is slowly filling up the tubing. Uh, another good question with, do you taste the beer now to make sure that it's it's good and something terrible didn't go wrong fermenting? 
Um, absolutely, you can. A lot of people do. It is like warm, flat beer that isn't quite ready. And once it has the bottling sugar, it's a little bit sweet. Um, I always like when we're testing batches, people like hand me it. And I'm like, oh, I'm just, like, uncarbonated beer is gross to me, but you can get a good idea of what your final beer will taste like. But if you have the patience to just wait two weeks, trust me, your beer hasn't gone totally bad. If it's done the fermentation process and it's going to taste even better carbonated and cold. Yeah, your beer can be described as green at this point. It basically just means it's not conditioned. Conditioned is another word that essentially means carbonated. Um, but once your beer is conditioned, it means it's both carbonated and also just doesn't taste kind of not ready yet. It just has just needs some time to kind of meld into a beer flavor that you're happy to drink. Cool. So our tubing is ready to go. So Erica, would you mind? And this is something I would often just do by myself, but again, if you have a helper, then it's, it's great. And this step is a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about sediment. There is no sediment in here, but you do want to make sure that you're getting all of it out. So this, if you were doing it by yourself, absolutely prop it up. Make sure that the tip is in the deepest part of the beer. And then if you can like just tilt it at the very end, you'll get all your beer out. Yeah. So I'm going to stick the rack and cane at the very bottom. It can go straight to the bottom at this point. And again, we're going to open it up, let the beer start just barely flowing out, and then I'm going to close the tubing clamp um, right away. So. Okay. And that was it. That was fast again. So. Now, ready to move on to filling bottles. Yeah. And there's the dog. <laughs> cool. So, just going to open it up. Cool. So you can see on this one, and we'll get a close up when we're done. But you want it basically that far from the very top. And I'm going to do another one. So one person asked why we're using a siphon and not just pouring it with a funnel. Um, good question. What we want to do is move our beer with relatively, um, we, want, we don't want to introduce a lot of air at this point because we want to avoid it, that um, kind of flat flavor. So we don't want to oxidize our beer. So by siphoning it, we are protecting it. Protecting it. And then you just repeat, fill, close that up, and move on to the next bottle. And I like getting the tubing going as close to the bottom of the bottle as possible, just also so you're not introducing more air. This is a, honestly a little short for how I normally like it, but 
just trying to you know, make sure it all all worked on camera. Didn't want to put didn't want to put this way above my head. It would have been a little little weird of a shot. But here's the dog. <laughs> So if you want to know, Porter loves all dogs, loves all humans, absolutely despises skateboards. So as long as you're a human that isn't riding or carrying a skateboard, she'll love you. Let's tilt this more. Yeah, tilt it all the way. And it's good when you do have a helper because you don't need to like always be looking and glancing back and forth. You just you know, keep your eyes on the prize. And here we go. And the next one should be our last bottle. Okay. Yeah, we did it. Cool. And you can close it, but Really no reason to close it at this point. Just lift it up and let any of the remainder flow right in. Close it as you move it, just so you're not you know, dripping on the floor. And yeah, okay, cool. So we got 10 bottles here. And they're all filled pretty much the same height, which is great. If when you're doing this, um, you don't get quite 10 bottles, that's totally fine. Uh, it may have meant that you either boiled off a little too much, didn't have that full gallon when you started, that you were using slightly bigger bottles than the 12 ounce, um, or that when you were siphoning and getting rid of that sanitizer, you accidentally got rid of some of your beer. Totally fine. Ration them out and enjoy them when they're ready. Absolutely. Cool. So I'm just going to get a close up so you can get an idea of how full they are. And now we're going to move on to those beautiful caps that we started sanitizing at the very beginning. Yeah, capping is my favorite. You just get these little guys on. It's like each one gets a hat. And you can start, start crimping them. Whoops. Someone asked about an auto siphon. We'll go over that once we're done capping these. I'm just filling up the jug so that I can show you how we would use a mini auto siphon next. Yeah, if you're doing a lot of brewing or if you really struggle with the siphoning process or if you're short and impatient like I am, um, the mini siphon's kind of amazing. It, it speeds up the siphoning process and um, it's, it's my favorite bodily accessory other than this capper, which, um, so when I was 10, my dad used to brew beer and I was in charge of capping. And so when uh, we started making beer uh, after college, I actually had my dad's old capper. It was the same exact model and still worked. And so we chose this one because it's super sturdy and lasts uh, like 20 years. So that's great. <laughs> and uh, someone else wanted to know if we had much beer left over. Um, like, 
No, not really, not not at all. Um, probably less than a maybe less than a quarter cup in here. Um, so no, we got we got all of it, and that's um, ten bottles is about right. Okay, this is actually the first time this capper has been used. Um, it does loosen up a little bit, but don't be afraid of it. Just make sure it crimps all the way down. Yeah, good. Yeah, so we, we just took it out of the box um, earlier today. So again, just place it kind of in line with your face um, so that your whole body is just going downward. Don't basically do it like that. You you might end up, you know. Knocking the bottle over. Knocking the bottle over. And then when you're prying it off, you'll just remove it like that. You'll see there's a tiny divot. We like the divot. Some people think it's ugly. I think it, when I see the divot, I know that bottle is capped. <laughs> and um, as the bottle, as the beer carbonates over time, you'll see the, you might see the divot like, change slightly. It kind of gives you a little indication of where it is. Down. And at this point, you don't really want to, you want to do your best to keep the beer kind of flat, um, unmoving. You don't want to shake it around too much for the same reasons why we weren't using a funnel before um, and why we weren't going crazy stirring. Um, we don't want to introduce too much oxygen at this point. Yeah, there is a little bit of air at the top, but the carbonation's going to to kind of create a protective layer in between that, and so keeping them still, not shaking up, is great. Yeah, CO2, carbon dioxide, is heavier than air. It's heavier than oxygen, so it will form a protective barrier for you. Okay, the other question was, why didn't we um, just take off the bottling tip and just leave it flat? You know what? As I was doing it, I had the same thought. And honestly, it's because we just don't, we don't. Never have, We yeah. just don't do it. But, um, <laughs> but I'm glad we did it because I was going to just say, hey, why don't we just do that? But I didn't want to do it for the first time on camera. But yeah, seriously, no reason why you shouldn't. So I think next time we bottle, we're... Yeah, you don't. You definitely do only need the tip when it's coming out of the jug with the sediment. Um, we just never have done it, but of course you can. So next time, yes, give yourself that little bit of extra space. Yeah, and that's why we like doing classes because our kits really evolved over years. Uh, we're we're now in our tenth year, if you'd believe yeah. it. Yeah. And um, we started out of the Brooklyn Flea, which is like an outdoor market, and we still sell at the uh, Union Square Holiday Market, if anyone ever gets a chance to go there during the holiday season. And we meet people pretty much all day that have, you know, brewed with our kits, and a lot of, a lot of them have gone on to start breweries, and it's a really, it's a give and take. Um, we try to get you on the path to brewing and bottling, um, but we love hearing feedback, and we love improving what we're doing, and really not putting the rack and cane tip on during that second part. Yeah, it makes sense. I might have been able to get that quarter cup of uh, of beer. We'll give it a tr we'll give it a shot next time, and we'll um, you know, we'll let you know in the comments down here if you check back. Um, cool. But yeah, we have ten beers ready to go, and what I like to do when we're done is first first just you know give give your surface area a quick. A quick wipe because remember there's sanitizer but there might be a little bit of beer so it might be a little sticky um, if you don't want that on your bottles or on your box then you know move them out of the way um, so we had 10 beers here they came out of here I'm gonna just put them right back in there I think this is a great way to you know store them and just yeah in they go because you don't want your beer exposed to too much light. That's why beer bottles are this brown glass. So by putting them in here, they're compact, you can move them around, and you're also keeping them protected. 
And the reason why you are keeping it out of light, both while it's fermenting and then while it's um, carbonating in the bottle, is because hops are broken down by light. And so that's going to cause off flavors. Uh, if a beer is skunked, it's normally been exposed to light. It actually gives off the same chemical compound that is in skunk spray. Uh, if you're doing a cider or something unhopped, you don't have to. Uh, but just kind of like the Racking Cane tip, we're in a habit of always storing it in the dark so we don't have to remember which one we're brewing. Exactly. So what I what I sometimes do is just like right on the side here, the date, so that you know that you can check it in a little while. We usually just, um, we might check one bottle after like 10 days, but you know, two weeks, it'll be good to go. Um, but you want to leave them like this. So sometimes people put them in the fridge and then they email us in two weeks and say, well, my beer's flat. Um, it, that's because you want to keep your bottles at room temperature. Uh, pretend like it's basically still fermenting. Like if you ever see a Belgian beer and it says like secondary fermentation or like re-fermented in bottle, that's because, you know, your beer fermented in this jug and now it's fermenting again in bottles. And that's just to give it that carbonation. So it's fermentation, it's conditioning, call it what you want, but what it's, you know, you know what it's doing, it's making bubbles. And it has to do that at room temperature, yeah. not cold. And the, uh, on the opposite end of that, before you taste it, you want to make sure your beer is cold. So if you're going to test one bottle, put it in the fridge the night before and open it up the next day. And why you do that is because CO2 dissolves in cold liquids. And so if a beer is warm and you open it up, foam's going to pour over. It doesn't mean that your beer is necessarily overcarbonated, just all the CO2 is forced to the top. So you want to make sure that your beer is properly chilled before you open it up so that that carbonation is in the beer and not foam at the top. Yeah, like I don't know if we have any oceanographers in the audience <laughs> here, but you might know that cold liquid, like cold parts of the ocean, often have more soluble ga gases. So more CO2, more oxygen, and lots of healthy fish. <laughs> I uh, had no idea. <laughs> oceanography. Uh, so same deal goes for beer. Um, Warmer liquid has less bubbles in the actual liquid. Colder liquids will have more ability to take on bubbles. So put it in the fridge for, like, as Erica said, the night before. If you want to do it for a day or two, that's even better. And that'll just give more time for the CO2, which is, you know, everywhere in that bottle to be absorbed into the beer. Yeah. Um, let's... Let's see how this mini auto siphon works, and then we can give you some tips for if your beer is undercarbonated or overcarbonated after that first test bottle. Cool. So right here is a mini auto siphon. Uh, it's a little strange looking. Um, you might, when you get it, you'll see two parts. Three, if you take off the tip, the tip is attached in this instance. You have this like chamber basically, and then you have what essentially looks exactly like the racking cane that we used um, just moments ago. So first, we're going to sanitize it. Because there are more pieces, it's a little bit easier during the sanitizing part to get a little messy. I will be honest about that, but anytime you have a chamber that has like a little hole at the bottom and a bigger hole at the top, you'll you might just go like this and just, you know, get Splash a little sanitizer. Everywhere. <laughs> so remember, you have paper towels, you have t actual towels, use them. And now I'm just going to get that tubing. So we have the tubing that we just used. I'm going to get that back in the sanitizer. Fill that up. I'm going to put this racking cane inside of the chamber here. And this is when um, you might accidentally spray yourself. When you force it down, you'll see the uh, sanitizer start to fill the inside of the racking cane. So if you do this really quickly, you're just going to shoot it straight. Mm -hmm. So when you do put, um, when you do force it down, put your hand in front of it so that anything that you spray is going straight down. So this is a quick way to sanitize it. Just basically doing that. 
So if you don't mind your hand being sanitized, which, you know, I'm sure you're cool with it at this point. So we're going to take the tubing and put it on the racking cane. So let me see. If we're going to get a close up here. So our space bar switch. Cool. Cool. So here we go. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah. And it's so on. See. And I'll do it one more time. So we have this here. We have the tubing. And there you go. Perfect. And if you've brewed a bunch of batches and this part starts to kind of like flare out a little bit, you can just cut an inch off and start with a fresh piece. Good as new. So now I'm going to give it a pump and it basically does that entire process. See, I'll move the tubing up so you can see it when it comes out. And it basically just does the siphon for you. So if you remember when I was putting the tubing and the end of the rack and cane tip. And just to make sure, are we definitely on yes. this? Okay, cool. Just <laughs> so, wanted to make sure you weren't looking at the table again. <laughs> nice, lovely table. Uh, so now, um, instead of doing that like um, slightly awkward thing where we're just filling the tubing and getting the bubbles out manually, this basically just, it doesn't matter. You can just, as long as you have like that much liquid, you can just go over, give it a pump, and you've started your siphon. So it is, it is pretty great. Um, we have them on our site if you if you want. And you don't uh, have to fill the tubing. Um, yeah, you don't have to fill the tubing with sanitizer and necessarily and like it. have it flow out. Um, so it's it's yeah much much easier to use. So I'll show you. Here, so got our pot from earlier. I'm going to stick the end of the mini siphon in here. Do you want to just hold the end? Yeah. And I'm going to raise it up. And that was it. And that was honestly like a kind of a bad job on my part. Um, but as you can see, it's it's going. Yeah, and it's going down. Yeah. And then I'm holding that again. Mm -hmm. And. Here's a good chance to see, um, if you see a tiny bubble, can you um, press command tab? Yeah. All right, I'll close this up real quick. <laughs> I'm just gonna show you something real quick um, that you sometimes see air bubbles at the top of the siphon. Um, it wasn't happening during the racking cane demonstration, so. Let me see. So, we have the tubing, and what you're going to see here is a slight air bubble, and I'm going to open the racking cane, or sorry, open the tubing clamp, and you can see that there's just like an air bubble dancing at the top of there. It's usually a little bigger. This is really, can you, great, quickly, sorry, we have a quick, um, Quick, um, actually, can you hold this real quick? So, so yeah, we're still on the close-up. So, what I'm going to do is just wiggle this so that that air bubble goes away. And, and now it's gone. So, not the... And see, this is a, uh, all of this activity is because it's not in the deepest part. So this is when you tilt it, tilt that. And with the mini siphon, you could easily restart the siphon by just doing a pump. So yeah, you can see how even with 
like a super low amount of liquid with the mini siphon, we were able to restart it really quickly. Okay. And we are back. Yay. Cool. So that's how you use the mini siphon. It's, it's pretty great. Um, you don't really need it if you have the rack and cane and you're confident with the rack and cane. Um, you're okay, but uh, a lot of people really like it. Um, it's probably the most popular accessory that people get when they're you know on their second batch or so. So that's just called the mini auto siphon. It's pretty stellar. We like it. And... Yeah, basically that's how you bottle. Yeah, uh, and the, the last two tips are just, so it's been 10 days or you waited the full two weeks, you put your test bottle of beer in overnight, you wait two days, wait a day, and you taste it and it's undercarbonated. And you're like, no, I would have loved this if it had like a bit more carbonation. Don't worry, sure. let it ferment at room temperature. Don't move the rest of the bottles to the fridge. Just let it sit out for another two, three days, then test another bottle. If it's the right carbonation, you can move them all in or you can leave them out and just drink them as you're ready. The opposite is if it's over carbonated and this can happen if you didn't get the full gallon, if you added the same amount of sugar to less beer um, or there's a couple ways, but if you put that bottle in overnight after 10 days and it, the carbonation is a little bit too high, you want to move all the bottles into the fridge right away and then this will keep it from continuing to ferment um, and then when you are ready to drink them you should drink them pretty quickly and get them as cold as possible so keep them in the fridge have them in an ice bath um, open them with the bottle facing away from you in a sink just in case it's going to foam over um, and then let us know we can troubleshoot your next batch so that you're getting the right amount of carbonation yeah um, and one other thing, yeah. um, we don't, I, we, oh. yeah, I really missed it. I showed Porter when she was going a little nuts at a skateboard. Um, another thing, uh, if you don't want a bottle, our kegs, um, we have one on our site. Um, we'll include a link to that probably in the follow-up as well, but it's the U keg from Growler Works. It's a one gallon. Um, it's pretty awesome. We use it a lot for our test batches and we've poured at events with it, um, we like using it, especially for something like a New England IPA, which is going to be super hoppy and aromatic. Um, basically, it's a one-gallon stainless steel keg, and with that, you don't use priming sugar. All you do is transfer your beer from your fermenter into the keg, and then you just force carbonate it. So it has like a little CO2 canister. You just pump that up and then put it in the fridge, and in three days, you have beer. So you don't have to worry necessarily about under or over carbonation. Um, plus, you just cut off like 11 days of your brew day. So you can drink beer like pretty much in like two and a half weeks. So it's pretty 